Mm -hmm. uh, you said it, it just it, that now it's moving forward. We have to keep the, the pressure on. Uh, in other news, similar, we have a former reserve uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma deputy has been found guilty of second degree manslaughter in the shooting death of Eric Harris. You may remember this case. 74-year-old Robert Bates shot and killed Eric Harris in April 2015 during an undercover drug operation. Harris said he accidentally grabbed his gun instead of his taser. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the jury deliberated less than three hours on Wednesday and recommended the maximum sentence of four years in prison for his crime. The actual sentencing is actually not scheduled until uh, May, 34th, uh, thir May 31st. Joining us via Skype from Tulsa to discuss the trial and the conviction of Robert Bates is the organizer for We the People Oklahoma, the good brother Mark Lewis, and the attorney for We the People Oklahoma, Lori Phillips. Welcome both of you to News One Now. Um, now, Thank Mark, you, I'm going to start with you. You were in the courtroom uh, uh, for this entire thing during the trial. It seemed to move along rather quickly. What was the feeling in the courtroom during the trial? I mean, it was a tense moment. Uh, I think uh, I sat with the family, of course, and um, it was just really tense. And we actually, to be honest with you, I, we thought it, they were going to come back with a not guilty verdict. Um, and we see the tone why, why, all over. Why? Why do you think that? Well, well, you see the tone all over the country. I mean, with so many different unarmed African American men, you know, yeah. and just the fact that power, money you know, that, that went out. But uh, when the jury came back with a guilty verdict, man, it was a sigh of relief. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think you won? I mean, usually this stuff, you know, I, I remember all the way back to Rodney King when I was a guy out of law school, you got all the facts on your side, common sense tells you one thing, the jury goes against you. What was so special in this case that you were able to finally prevail? Uh, well, number one, there was a video, um, and I think that video just told the story. And then number two, I believe the defense tried to go with the argument that Eric Harris actually had a cardiac arrest prior to the bullet. So that was nonsense. I mean, it was really laughable. <laughs> Died just and, in um, time for the bullet? Okay. Yeah, yeah, basically, I mean, had like the bullet had nothing to do with it. And um, and I think the jury saw it. The jury, jury saw it that, hey, you know, that's that that's doesn't ignorant. make sense. Yeah, uh, Laura, you, you can't uh, sometimes uh, uh, insult the jury so much that you actually push them to the other side. Uh, now, you know, Bates, uh, Lori, was charged with second-degree murder, uh, second-degree manslaughter, um, not even murder. Is it your view that the, 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 the charging uh, was, was appropriate? No, I believe they should have charged him with first-degree manslaughter. Um, I don't think that the district attorney was pushed into filing charges by We the People of Oklahoma because of the public outcry and because of the organizing efforts of Mark Lewis and, and his group, We the People of Oklahoma. Man's, second degree manslaughter, of course, is the the lowest charge that he could, that Bates could be charged with. I got you. So now, uh, at some point, you're going to have to deal with the sentencing. The maximum sentence for second degree ma manslaughter in Oklahoma is four years. Now, you got to have a second test here. Do you think the judge is going to give the maximum? Or, considering you're talking about a 74 year old man, do you think the judge is going to take it easy on him? Well, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mark. No, well, I, yeah, go ahead, Mark. Okay, I, I actually think the judge is going to give him what the jury recommended. I mean, it was priceless. I mean, to see him being handcuffed and actually escorted out. I mean, we had never seen anything like that. They actually escorted him out. So I think the judge is going to listen to the jury and uphold what the jury has. Uh, Lori, do you, do you agree, or do you feel like uh, the normal pattern of uh, even when we get the conviction? Uh, the sentence is is a you know probation. I mean, what, what's your view about this particular judge, this particular case? I don't believe that he's going to sentence Mr. Bates to um, probation, okay. particularly because the jury came back so quickly, and they also recommended the maximum sentence. Um, he has Mr. Bates has requested through his attorney a PSI, and what that is that's a pre-sentencing investigation. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a recommendation by a third party uh, of what his sentence should be. I anticipate it'll probably be less than the four years, but the judge could accept that or accept the jury's recommendation or okay. do something entirely different. Well, now look, this is a big, big victory for We the People uh, Oklahoma. Yeah. You guys are, you know, obviously powerhouse grassroots group. Uh, uh, give us a sense of what's next on the agenda for you. Uh, obviously, something like this, it might set you up for a big 
uh, police uh, mis uh, accountability reform push or something on criminal justice. We've been talking about that this morning. What's next right. for you guys? Well, I mean, we're looking at a lot of the deaths that occurred in the county jail. There's so many um, uh, violations, just medical violations. So yeah. that's what we're looking at. Um, and it, I mean, it's just amazing. This was totally a community effort. I mean, everyone from all Tulsa came and just supported the family and just pushed it. I mean, this totally, this wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the people. Gotcha. Yeah, I just want to come back to the, to the panel a little bit. I mean, you know, we've seen case after case where justice was not served. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I think people don't understand is that community pressure does work and can work in these cases. Right, and I'm really excited to see, um, we saw the same thing, the same excuses happen when Oscar Grant was murdered, of cops saying I didn't know which thing I was grabbing with, and I think um, while these verdicts are really important, it also matters how we're talking about these people in these cases, and the leeway we give police officers in situations like this. So I am really happy to see that organizers on the ground have been able to move this to see that this is what a victory looks like for now, but again, next step what does it look like for um, there to be some real reform with our police officers? Yeah, but again, you know, this notion that somehow we have to have the bar really low to push the prosecutor to do his or her job in cases where there's at least a clear, if it's not, uh, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt standard to get you where the jury's got to take you, you at least have the evidence that there should be a charging, which we don't see. And mm -hmm. I think it's sad that they went for the lowest bar here instead of the maximum, mm -hmm. which I think he should have gotten. Well, so just, one second, uh, Jessica, you, know, you are uh, one of the uh, best campaigners that, that we've seen come on the criminal justice scene uh, recently. You know, how important is it to get ordinary people involved in these kind of uh, cases and campaigns and causes? It's huge. That's what matters. That's what elected officials are listening to. Uh, and, and DAs and sheriffs in your community, those are elected officials. Those might not be the sexiest uh, races. They might not be the ones that get all the attention. But getting ordinary people involved and saying, hey, I don't agree with how you're sentencing. Hey, I don't agree with how you're charging. I don't agree with your police practices is incredibly important because those are the same people who are going to show up at the polls and make sure those fo folks either get elected or don't get elected again. And now, and she, I think she's making a, a point, it might be a, a, a challenge to the black folks, we tend to come out for the big campaigns, you know, the presidential election, but sometimes we miss those down ballot races and we miss those local community races. We've, we've addressed that many times on the show, how what you, what you just said, that people in our communities tend not to come out, not unless there's a huge press push, usually around the presidential elections and things like that. But I mean, there's nothing else to say but what you just said, to reiterate the importance of understanding that you can control your local culture. I was in Ferguson during that whole event, and a lot of people there were confused when I asked them, you're the majority people here, you're black, you have these white oppressors running this country, excuse me, this area, and you have the, the voting power to change that. And, and the whole concept was like, Huh? What? <laughs> what? Good. So people need to understand yeah. that they have so, the kind of power in their hands. Well, uh, speak, speaking of, of power in their hands, having uh, shows like this, panels like this, I think is very, very important. We got more stuff to talk about, though. Coming up in the headlines, tense moments in Baltimore City. A man threatens to blow up a television station. That prompted an evacuation of the whole building. We've got the latest. Also, we're going to discuss environmental racism and the efforts of a group called Green for All, trying to make things better in Flint, Michigan. For the latest news, I want you to stay up to date and informed at news1.com. Also, you can hit me up with your thoughts on Twitter at VanJones68 or at News1 or on our Facebook page on News1. You can go to that page as well. It is 16 after the hour. Stay with us. We're going to be right back.